Hi everyone, welcome to our 13th module of Verilog HDL Crash Course and in this module we are going to cover finite state machine in Verilog HDL. So before I start this video, just a small request, if you are visiting to this channel first time or if you have not subscribed this channel so far, I would request you to please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Now let's get started. So in digital VLSI design, finite state machines play a very important role in implementing the correct behavior of the system during different operating modes. As the finite state machine enables the system to go through different operating modes as per the user requirements or during the self-booting process. So it is very easy to implement the different operating modes of a SOC using finite state machine. For example, implementing different low power modes in a SOC using state machines. So for example, our SOC is going to work in different power modes. For example, active power mode, sleep power mode, deep sleep power mode, etc. Then the transition from active state to sleep state and from sleep to deep sleep state, from deep sleep to active state, the implementation of these configurations can be easily implemented using finite state machines. Now the another example could be design of transmitter and receiver logic for example UART communication protocol or SPI communication protocol or some another communication protocols. So by using finite state machines we can easily implement different states in transmitter and receiver logic. So these are the few examples where we can use finite state machines to implement our logic in Verilog HDL. Now let's see the different types of finite state machine used in Verilog. So there are two types of finite state machines used in Verilog. The one is Murray finite state machine and the another one is Mille finite state machine. So first let's discuss the Murray finite state machine. So in Murray finite state machine there are basically three logic blocks which are next state logic, the present state logic and the output logic. And if you see here in Murray FSM the output depends on the present state. So in Mure FSM the output depends only on the present state and here output is less prone to glitch because of registered present state. So here the present state logic is basically a sequential circuit logic. That means whatever the output of this present state is that is basically synchronous in nature with respect to clock. So if this present state output is registered output that means the chances of having glitches in the output logic is less. And the number of states which are required to implement a Mure type of FSM is comparatively more than Mille type of FSM. And the next important point is Mure type of FSMs are slower or basically they react slower to inputs. That means this is our input. So our input is directly not affecting the output. Rather the input is basically affecting our next state logic and then our next state logic is going to affect our present state logic and the present state output is basically going to affect the output and the present state is basically a sequential circuit so it is going to take one clock cycles before it produce a new present state and that further is going to affect the output. So Mure types of FSMs basically react slower to the inputs. You will understand this in more details when we do the comparative study of Murray and Mille FSMs. So now let's discuss the Mille type of FSM. So the only difference in Mille type of FSM and Murray type of FSM is in Murray type of FSM the output only depends on the present state. But in Mille type of FSM the output depends on present state as well as the current inputs. So this is the basic implementation difference between Mure FSM and Mille FSM. So here as you see the output depends on input as well. So the inputs are asynchronous in nature they can come at any time and hence there are more chances of having glitches in the output logic of the Mille FSM. And the number of states which are required to implement a Mille type of FSMs are less compared to Mure FSM. We will understand this by using a very good example and 
designing that logic using Moore FSM and Mille FSM and there we will see how the number of states are differ in Moore type of FSM and Mille type of FSM. But for now just remember that the number of states which require to implement a Mille type of FSM is less compared to Moore type of FSMs. And as you can see the output also depends on the input show Mille type of FSM reacts faster to the inputs. Now let's see the different FSM design techniques. So basically the meaning here is how we can design or what are the different design techniques to implement the Moore type of FSMs or Mille type of FSMs. So as you can see here basically there are three building blocks in both type of the FSM. The next state logic, the present state logic and the output logic. So how we can implement these three building blocks in Verilog. So the first method is using a single process. We can only use a single process or a process that means a procedural block to code the present state logic, the next state logic and the output logic. This is one way. The second way is using two process where one process will code the present state logic and the next logic and another process is to code the output logic. And the third way is using three process where each of the process is going to code the present state logic, the next state logic and the output logic. And the recommendation is to separate the sequential current state logic and the combinational next state logic and the output logic. That means use three process to implement the three building blocks of finite state machines. So as I said the current state logic is going to be sequential logic and the next state logic and the output logic is going to be combinational logic. Now let's see one another important point here of how we can define the states of a finite state machine. So there are two ways of defining the states in finite state machine. One is using parameters. So by using parameters we can define different different states in a finite state machine. For example here state 0 is nothing but denoted by 0, state 1 is denoted by 1, state 2 is denoted by 2 and state 3 is denoted, denoted by 3. And we can also make use of macros to define states. So how we can do that? For that we have to use the tick define macro and then the state name and its value. So here you can see that we have used four tick defines to define the state 0, state 1, state 2 and state 3 and the value of these are nothing but to tick d0, to tick d1, to tick d2 and to tick d3. Now the point we have to remember here if we use the macro type of state definition is when using macro definitions we must put a back quote in front. For example when in the case statement we are going to use the states then we have to use tick state 0. So tick state 0 will be nothing but it will be replaced with the value 2 tick d 0. So we have to use basically this tick and the, then the state name. So this is how there are two ways to define the states in finite state machines which are first is using parameters and the second is using macros. Now let's see a simple example of finite state machine and we will also see its HDL coding. So this is a simple finite state example where we have the four state, state 0, state 1, state 2 and state 3 and we have one another signal which is nothing but start. So if start is 0, our finite state machine is going to be in state 0. So on start 0 as well as when reset is equal to 1 in both the cases our FSM is going to be in state 0. Then if our start is 1 we will go from state 0 to state 1 and from state 1 to directly we are going to state 2 without any conditions and from state 2 if we have one another signal skip 3. If the skip 3 is high that means we will skip the third state and we will directly go to state 0. Otherwise if skip 3 is 0 that means we are going from state 2 to state 3 and in state 3 depending on the another variable which is weight 3 if the weight 3 variable is high that means we are going to stay in state 3 only. Otherwise if our weight 3 variable becomes 0 that means we will go from state 3 to state 0. So this is a functionality of a particular finite state machine and the output of FSM is 
whenever the FSM is in state 0, the output of this FSM is going to be 3 tick B 0 0 0. In state 1, the output will be 3 tick B 1 0 1. In state 2, the output will be 3 tick B 1 1 0. And in state 3, the output will be 3 tick B 0 0 1. So there are few points to note from here. So the first point is the output of this FSM is only depending on the present state. That means this state machine is a Moore type of state machine. Now let's see how we can implement this state machine in Verilog HDL. So this is the Verilog HDL coding of this particular finite state machine. So here we have a module my FSM and the input and output ports of the, this FSMs are clock, reset, the start input, skip 3, wait 3 and the output Z. So clock, reset, start, skip 3 and wait 3 are the input ports of this design and the output is nothing but Z. And Z is, we will declare the Z as a register variable because we are going to implement the output logic in a procedural block. So if we are using any output signal in procedural block, we have to declare that signal as a register. And here by using the parameter we are defining the states so state 0, state 1, state 2 and state 3 we have defined here using the parameters and then we are defining two internal variables which are state and next state and which are 2 bit value. So this bit width depends on how many states we have. So here we have 4 states 0, 1, 2 and 3 that means to implement 4 states we need a 2 bit variable. So here now we are going to use the recommended method of FSM implementation which is nothing but using three procedural blocks to implement the present state logic, the next state logic and the output logic. So first of all we are going to implement the next state logic and the next state logic is nothing but combinational logic. So if you see here in this always block we have used only the level sensitive signals. And the signals which are in our sensitivity list are state, which is nothing but present state, the start input, the skip 3 input and the wait 3 input. So if you remember in this block diagram, what are the inputs to the next state logic, the inputs and the present state. So these are the inputs to our next state logic. So here we have used the state, this is nothing but the present state and these are the inputs which we have for our FSM. So now depending on the present state and the inputs we are going to determine our next state. So if our present state is state 0 then from state 0 if you see the state diagram from state 0 if start is 0 then we are going to be in the state 0 only or if reset is also 1 then also we are going to be in state 0 only otherwise if start is equal to 1 we are going to be in the state 1. Okay, so in when we are in state 0 and if start equal to 1, that means the next state is going to be state 1. We will see the effect of reset signal in another procedural block. So otherwise, next state will be our state 0. And if we are in the state 1, then if you see here, from state 1, we are directly going to the state 2. So from state 1, the next state will be state 2. And if we are in state 2, then depending on the skip 3 signal, we will be either in state 0 and state 3. So if skip 3 is high, that means just skip the state 3 and go to the state 0. Otherwise, the next state will be state 3. And in state 3, depending on the wait 3 signal, we will be either on state 3 itself or we will go into state 0. So when we are in the state 3 then depending on the weight 3 signal if weight 3 signal is high we will be in the state 3 itself otherwise we will go into state 0 and default state will be our state 0. So default is here in this particular case becomes optional because there are only 4 possible values possible for, from the state signal. So the state is a 2 bit signal so there could be only 4 possible values and we have covered all the values state 0, state 1, state 2 and state 3. That means there is no other possible branch for this case statement. So default it is a best practice to use the default statement and here default our next state is going to be state 0. Now let's see the register generation or this is nothing but the present state logic generation. So present state logic as I said present state is going to be a sequential circuit. So depending on the positive edge clock or positive is reset if our reset is high then we are going to be in state 0 so as you saw here 
whenever reset is high we are going to the state 0 otherwise if reset is not high then our present state is going to be next state and the next state is coming from this procedural block so the next stage is depending on the state and the input signals we will get our next state and the next state basically in another procedural block it will get assigned to state which is nothing but present state so now let's see how we can implement our output logic so as i said here the output is mentioned based on the present state so this is a more type of fsm and here depending on the state present state if our present state is state 0 our output is going to be 3 tick b 0 0 0 if state is state 1 if our present state is state 1 the output is going to be 3 tick b 1 0 1 if our present state is state 2 the output is going to be 3 tick b 1 1 1 else if our present state is state 3 the output will be 3 tick b 0 0 1 or default the output is going to be 0 so this is how we can code a particular FSM using three procedural blocks. So friends, I hope the concept covered in this modules are clear to you. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. And we are going to cover a particular sequence detector using Mure FSM and Mille FSM in one of our next module. Thank you very much.